What's up, YouTube? It's Joy. We are the Resistance. We'll come out here, see y'all, shoot a little video right quick. And uh, as you can see, we've lived through the hurricane that's come up through here. Uh, we we uh, pretty much didn't have that, but some rain in our area of North Carolina. Uh, luckily enough, we didn't take the brunt of the storm. Florida pretty much done that for us. They took one for the team. I mean, I know they didn't do it willingly, but, you know, when God's hands in play, there ain't nothing to be done about it. Just pray and hope for the best. Uh, that thing come across Florida, went back out to the Atlantic, come back in, in South Carolina, and it took a path that was, took it across South Carolina and up into North Carolina, uh, into the area where I'm located at, actually. And, uh, Whenever we, we have one that hits around in that area, it, some of the older people, we kind of have a uh, antenna that goes up because most of us remember when the Hurricane Hugo come up here. And, you know, that, that, that one there, it hit South Carolina coast wide ass open at a, a level four hurricane. I've actually got a little ink on my arm. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that, that is supposed to signify. It's supposed to be for Hurricane Hugo right there. That, that's what that one's on there for. But uh, anyway, like I say, today we was actually supposed to have rain all day long, but, I mean, it ain't rained a drop today. Uh, you know, I got up around about 5.30 or so this morning, and, you know, it wasn't raining. We had some cloud cover. We still got some cloud cover. Sun's broke out some. It's it's just cool though. It's probably in the I don't know upper fifties or sixties. I reckon. Been actually pretty nice. You know, I'm a cold weather person anyhow. And uh, but anyway, like I say, we done good. Just got some rain, and uh, which we could have used. But uh, heart goes out to everybody down in Florida that's lost. You know. The homes, everything, all the possessions, or even the ones that's lost family members. Uh, uh, like I say, our hearts go out to you. Uh, I wanna, yeah, I'm gonna kind of roll into a rant this evening. You know, listening to some of the crap going on with the upper echelons of the government. I'm gonna pause this just a second, y'all. Sorry about that, y'all. I had a pit bull trying to make a snack out of a kitty cat out here. He ain't had his lunch yet. But anyway, uh, see, what was I? Oh, yeah. You got the government. I mean, you got the Pelosi's and the VPs and the Mr. Biden. And they just making total asses out of themselves more than what they already are. I mean, you got Kamala. She's on the TV saying, oh, we're going to help the breaking up, basically breaking up how they're going to help people down there in classes in Florida. I mean, you know, I don't care if you make $500 a month and you lost everything you got. You make $5,000 a month you make lost everything you got. I mean, both of you just lost, you know. Both of you, just, if you're going to get government help, you both of you need to be getting it. And that's how that is. You got Biden, you know, he, he don't even sound like he's even acknowledging what's going on as far as the hurricane goes. Hell, he may not even know what's come on. Nobody's probably told. Him. Who, who the hell knows what he's thinking? You bunch of stupid sons of bitches. And you got Pelosi. Oh, we got to have these illegal immigrants. We got to have them as many as we can because I won't have nobody to pick my grapes and make my wine. Oh, my God. You stupid twit. Look, people. November's coming up. Y'all know what you need to do. You need to get out there and do it. And no bullshit. No, oh, well, I can't go do this. Or I can't go, I can't make it. I need an absentee ballot. We need to be voting online. Take your ass to the polls in person. Cast your vote. If you're one of these type of people that's, doing it, that's in the military, doing military service, do your absentee ballot. They have it set up for you. You can do all this stuff. You know, they'll take care of it for you. Uh, if you're going to be out of town that period of time, you got plenty of time to know and and, and get what you got to get done. All right. 
if your ass is too damn lazy to go to the poll to vote, then your ass gets what you deserve. And something else I'm going to bring up, too. Yeah, these politicians we got, they're as crooked as a mountain road. But these people that keep voting in these blue leaders, y'all got y'all got to stop. Y'all y'all got to get your head out of your ass and quit getting your feelings butt hurt and all this. Well, I can't handle mean tweets. Oh my God, he is so vicious. You know, it's just done. So we're fine. It, 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 whatever. You you casted your votes. The ones of you did. And y'all helped screw this country up to a point where it's probably not going to ever be straightened out again. And y'all all out there hollering, oh, Trump's going to take us to war. Trump's going to take us to war. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, folks, you know, y'all y'all blue lovers, we are right now closer to uh, nuclear annihilation than we have ever been. And this is on y'all people. Y'all people that voted blue, this is on y'all. You know, I don't care if you like it or you don't. If you don't like it, change the channel. Go somewhere else. Let, go listen to somebody else, whatever. I don't care. To me, if you voted blue, whatever the hell's gone wrong since Mr. Biden took over is y'all's fault. Y'all put him in there. I ain't have nothing to do with that, by God. My, I'll tell you right now, I, I voted Republican. I'm not a registered Republican. I don't register to any, I'm not sworn to any party. And I never will be. But I know I'm not ever going to vote Democrat, period. And after, since the Obama administration, you know, that was a, a disaster in itself. Yeah, it, they're just a bunch of crooked, evil, evil sons of bitches. And they don't never need to be allowed to be in office again. And I'll tell you right now, as far as I'm concerned, I think party affiliations need to be totally got done away with. I think it was George Washington that said that if you divide the political process up into parties, there'll no longer be a leader of the country. There'll be a leader of the party. And that's what we've got right now. That's for a damn fact. All right, let's roll on. Uh, I'm going to jump right on into the nuclear war deal. Uh, Russia has annexed four areas of the Ukraine. Well, I I don't agree with that. You know, what what they got going on over yonder is them. And that it's a shit show. That's what it is. Uh I you know, Putin ain't no angel, neither is Zelensky. The uh, the ones that's really suffering is the Ukrainian citizens. Those are the ones I'm I'm feeling sorry for. And now you've got the Russian citizens. I mean, you've got them people uh, as jumping that place like rats off a sinking ship, buddy. I mean, they don't want nothing to do with that war. They're trying to get out of there. Uh, you know, you when when this first started happening, you had a lot of people, you know, getting out of Ukraine, which I can't really say I blame them because you know they had the fear of the Russian army coming in on them. And I know during my lifetime. You know, we were taught that the Russian army was uh, unmovable, unstoppable, unbeatable force. Well, that's kind of proven to be uh, totally wrong. Uh, you know, you, you had a lot of people leaving Ukraine, and then you had a lot of them returning, too. I mean, they, they were given, you know, wooden sticks <laughs> that made them look like guns. I mean, yeah, I guess they were ready to, wanting to fight. Not, not so much as being ready, but, you know, they had the willingness in them. You know, it is what it is. So, you know, that's, they, they, they're, they're ready to rock over you. And I'm going to tell you, they're going to start slinging missiles over there for long. And I, I don't think these are going to be no, these, uh, the javelins or nothing like that. This is going to be some big bulls they're getting ready to launch off. And like I said, you know, you had Russia annexed four areas of, of the Ukraine. And the Ukraine, I, it almost seems like they were doing, doing it during the annex and that they were attacking these countries. And, you know, they pretty much, Russia's pretty much come out and said, you know, look, we're going to, we're, we're going to use nukes. Now, whether you believe him, whether he's bluffing, uh, who knows? 
uh, maybe, you know, it looks like we're going to find out because if they're going to keep on, it's going to happen. And then you got Nord Stream 1 and 2. I mean, Nord Stream 1 and 2 actually happened before the other stuff. But that, you know, that, that right there is another, another crapshoot. You know, Russia's, they, they've got that thing back online and all. And then almost like the very next day, boom. It's it's back offline again, been blown apart. Uh, there was a uh, place in uh, Switzerland, I believe, that keeps up with the uh, uh, what you call it, the uh, seismic activity. You know, they register something like a two point, like a small. They basically said it was like a small explosion, and it was a sudden jolt on their Richter scale, and then a sudden deceleration on it you know it's like boom it's here and then it's gone so you know that's why they were saying explosion uh who done it i i'm gonna tell you right now i don't think russia would have done it you know they spent a lot of time a lot of money and everything getting this thing online why would they turn right back around and blow it back up when uh, simply all they had to do was flip the switch and make up an excuse I mean, they didn't have to destroy it uh, but anyway I've got my thoughts on that, and I don't think it was Russia. I think it was more nefarious type things, and I think it was also done to promote the use of nuclear weapons. That's, that's, that's what I'm calling right there. I think you've got NATO, and you've got the people that, that run the government over here. They're wanting this, I feel like. Uh, I mean, just everything leads back to the U.S. government. That's, that's the way it is, people. You know, they try to hide, they try to cover, and there's too many people out there that are smart enough to know how to uncover these things, and they're doing it. So, it's, uh, I want to ask y'all, uh, you know, if war like this happens, say we go into a WW3, how is that going to affect your prepping? Well, it's going to be a great it's going to affect greatly uh, a lot of the resources that you're able to prep now is no longer you, you you're not just going to be able to run down to china mart and uh grab them off the shelf and take them home and put them up i mean i don't think they'll be there uh I, you know there'll be some stuff there but i think that a lot of things will either stop being produced or not being mass produced not they'll be hard to find uh, you know, I think a lot of things will be going into the war effort. Uh, if they reenact the draft here in the United States, which, you know, it, it is in the, in the realm of possibility, you know, just a couple signatures and a vote is about pretty much all that's going to take. And then you're going to have a lot of uh, young Americans uh, heading off to, to uh, fight the uh, war of the elites. And they'll be the ones having to put their lives on the line, as, unless the war comes here. And uh, you know that that's not out of the realm of possibility either. You know anything anything is a go. If they start throwing nuclear missiles, anything after that point is a go. Anything is in the realm of possibility, y'all. Uh, I've I've talked to a couple of people at work. And, you know, tried to bring us up in discussion. They like, oh, that ain't ever going to happen. Or, do you really think something like that's going to going to do? You think that they're stupid enough to do that? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I mean, sorry that you don't. I mean, but you know, maybe you're looking at the wrong sources for your uh, information, people. But I, I just think it's coming, y'all. Uh, no, not tomorrow. Not next week. Uh, I mean, but it's, I think it's going to happen, you know, soon. I wish I could, you know, say down. I mean, we may wake up in the morning and hearing everybody's phones going off. Oh, they's been, you know, Russia done it. Russia done it. They they hit Ukraine with tactical nukes. Well, maybe they did. Maybe they did. I don't know. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say right now. I'm 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 nervous about it. I'm not worried about it because. I'm as, my prepping is still at a level maintained, you know, that that's not a big deal.
but your skills work people work on your skills it's not going to be long if they hadn't already doing it seeds are going to be going on sale and i'm talking about seeds for your garden they're going to be going on sale uh get as many of those damn things as you can get people stock them up put them in a dry dark place but i mean if you know some people ain't got the ability to get you a ziploc baggie a good one and put your package seeds inside that ziploc baggie get you a straw now i do this a lot zip that thing up put your straw in it to where it's sticking outside the back zip that thing up toward just a straw sticking out take it suck the damn air out of that thing make it good and tight and then you can pull that straw out and zip it back up and you'll probably have 95 percent of the air out of there uh i mean you can do seeds like that there's a lot of dry goods that you can do that way uh and you can you can it's not really vacuum sealing but if you ain't got a vacuum sealer that's better than nothing uh trying to roll the bag up and all that stuff like that and everything to kind of push all there out you you don't never really get it all out and even with the straw you're not going to get it all out but you'll get a lot more out than what you think and the, you know I, I like i say i do it all the time but you know it it's it's something you need to start making sure you've got because if it happens and it happens, say, over the cold weather months, when next next year rolls around, if we're able to plant gardens, you need going to have to have these seeds to do it with. I don't care if you've got to get out you under with a shovel and a rake and a hoe or whatever it is and manually dig and get these this soil broke up and everything, get these garden spots ready. You know, that may be your only way of getting food. Uh, start grabbing you grabbing you some some books on on gardening uh, tips techniques uh and start learning what grows in your area the the climate zones and all that stuff like that and everything uh you know you may be you may become your own grocery store uh now if if you can get you some chickens get you some rabbits Get you some goats, sheep. Uh, I ain't going to go out there and tell nobody to go out there and buy them a cow because I know everybody ain't got the resources to deal with something like that. Uh, you know, if you, if it, basically, what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is you need to start homesteading. Uh, that's something that we're phasing into. And I, I guess we're kind of going into it in a, a slow process. Uh, we have chickens. Well, we just acquired some ducks not long ago, uh, and we're going to start looking at probably when spring comes around. You know, maybe not gathering up all the eggs, let the hens lay, and see what we can't do about learning how to uh, hatch baby chicks and reproduce our chickens. Uh, we plan on in spring. We also plan on now getting. This also takes you know as long as we're still able to do this kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to look at maybe starting up with some rabbits. Uh, I dealt with rabbits one time before, and it most of the failures there was my fault, and it was just a lack of time. To be honest with you, uh, I kind of jumped into it faster than what I should have, and you know wound up getting rabbits and not too good a conditions for them to be in, and uh, we wound up getting rid of the rabbits because we weren't able to take care of them properly. But learned a lot since then. That's going to change. Uh, uh, we're going to lead the news a little bit. And I'm going to go into a security team uh, item in, in your mag. Uh, you know, take your security team members. And those guys or gals, you know, they need to be basically a brotherhood. They have to think the same way they have to know each other they have to pretty much be able to say i know what he's going to do in this situation or i know what she's going to do in this situation each one of them need to be able to do that now if they have to take and start spending time together then so be it that's what they need to do 
uh, with with my security team. I've got uh, my son is on there. Uh, my grandson is in there, and we have uh, the two other members. Uh, I, I consider everybody as a grandkid, so uh, that, that's just the way that is. But they, I need to start looking at them as a close brother, and they need to start looking at each other. And they pretty much do look at each other's that. But when it comes to me, it's like, well, Papa, oh, Papa, oh, Papa, oh, no. Y'all need to start looking at me as brother. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm the old guy in the group. Man, that's just how it is. But that don't mean I know everything. I mean, a few of these guys, you know, I mean, they, they've got military experience. And one's actually currently, he's, he's, he's still in the Army now. And he's doing some... Uh, uh, ranger training and so you know when he does get to come home he'll be bringing some valuable skills with him so but these guys like i say everybody needs to be looked at as a brother you know and i don't mean like brothers fight and all that stuff like that i mean a, a bond get that bond going like you know we may argue amongst each other, but there ain't nobody on the outside going to come in here and mess with us. You know, well, you you, you know, you get a hornet's a nest of hornets every once in a while. You get a one or two of them fight amongst each other. But I tell you what, you go messing with the nest, buddy, you got a world of hurt coming down on you. And that's the way it needs to be with your security team and your mag. You know, they're the guardians of the nest. And they need to be ready, willing. And able to do what it takes to defend that nest and you know with everything going on uh, that that's a possibility there's so many scenarios out there that can happen so and uh, I guess that's pretty much all I've got for this evening y'all remember uh, October 31st we got a uh, hashtag operation pocketbook coming up we're just asking everybody to sign out of your social media that day uh just stay off of it you know find something else to do you know uh, work on your preps spend it with your family you know find you some books some literature stuff like that uh if there's anything that i can uh help y'all with just put it in the chat uh you know face uh, i've got a wide variety of books i'd be more willing to give y'all uh, some information on them about as far as where you can get them and all that stuff like that and everything uh, that kind of stuff like that and if y'all got anything y'all want to add to it to the conversation here just throw it in the chat if y'all would uh, share out the video uh, trying to get some more subscribers lined up here and uh, if y'all ain't subscribed subscribed and listen to this uh, if y'all would please subscribe up maybe hit the bell on there and i got something i want to show you before i close out here on your ammunition supplies you need to check those and i mean look at every single round when you do i'm going to show you why is uh we bought a box here a while back and i've got one here let's see if i can get this where y'all can see it and you see how the side of that thing is dented in pretty good now if you're loading the magazine or whatever, and I mean, yeah, that going magazine, no problem. You may not even notice it happening, but when that round is chambered and it it fires, even if it does fire, even if it chambers completely, this will take your rifle out out of commission until you can stop and you can clear that. And if it gets if it gets put into the barrel if it gets chambered you're going to have to take uh, a cleaning rod your cleaning rod and you have to come in from the barrel and you're going to have to punch this thing out uh, now that whether this would be you know if it would fire uh, that's one thing but as long will it fire that projectile leave the barrel like it should or will it become entrapped in the barrel I mean you know who knows like i say that's a dangerous thing so take and take your time 
look at every single round you got because I mean something like this can get you killed in more ways than one uh, you know I'll go back a little bit like I say if if you have an AR and you're in the heat of the moment this thing tries to get chambered don't work you ain't got time to sit there and fiddle with it and try to you know clear it no you're slinging that rifle off to your side and you're grabbing your, your side on uh, that's why you need to train with that. You need to train in that transition. Uh, you know, take one day. Uh, got one coming up here, October 31st. You know, gear up. Train with this stuff. You know, practice. Practice transitioning from your main rifle to your sidearm. You know, getting that thing out of the way, drawing your sidearm, get back in target, and get back into the action. Uh, you ain't got time to sit there and you once you pull that trigger and you know that you have a, a weapon malfunction don't even bother looking at it just you know get it to the side get your side on up get into a safe position it, it's time to get in retreat mode then and hopefully you've got back up with you and they will be assisting you in your endeavors and get you back safely. So, like I say, check them ammunition rounds out, people. Uh, that something like that can be, you know, it's. It, it, I've seen this happen before, on other rounds. I, I've seen, uh, I've opened up box of ammunition, and where they're just all thrown in the box, like when you get, you know, like 200 round packs and stuff like that and everything. And uh, I've actually seen, the the head, the the bullet part be rolling around the box and there'd be an empty brass case and then there was some powder floating around. Uh, okay, you don't find it happening often, but you do find it. So check them rounds out, people. Uh, look at them real good. Make sure they're they're up to snuff. You know, uh, the, the maintenance on your ammo is just as important as the maintenance on anything else you have. You just can't throw them on the shelf and forget about them say, oh, I got all these when I need them. Uh, you may open them up box and <laughs> they may not be too good for you. But anyway, y'all, y'all stay low, stay ready. If y'all hear anything, uh, just, you know, reach out, shoot me an email or something. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to, to uh, check in on it and everything. But stay low, stay ready. If y'all hearing this, y'all part of the resistance.